Okay, uh, so obviously this is the second time I'm uploading this video. Uh, for those of you who have been paying attention, um, this one will eventually replace that first one and I'll take the other one down um, just because this one hopefully is going to be more concise. Um, looking back on the other one, it was kind of rambly and I do feel like my points were a little unclear. Uh, I still don't have a script for this one, but I, I think I can be more concise and more um, just clear about what the what the points are here. Uh, and I wanted to mention uh, thank you to Rundus for, for um, commenting on the last one and kind of helping me like sharpen what I wanted to say exactly about her and, and what my points were regarding her. Um, so first of all, when we get into talking about Dilibet and, and what she like, how to buff her is whenever you want to, whenever you buff a unit, theoretically, the point that you want to make is that you want to buff what they do, right? You want to improve what they do already. Um, now, what is De why does what does designer Lilibet do? What is her main purpose? We want to we want to try to figure that out, right? So, her S one is kind of generic. It just has a silence. Um, of course, she has damage increase damage scaling on the on the on all her moves. Um, and we look here, and her S three is also kind of not generic, but like she's got a a, a cleanse though. It's a two turn reduction, um, but it's basically just a cleanse. And increases the school down, the, the school down, the skill cooldown of all your opponent's moves if they don't have immunity, which they usually do whenever you pull this off. So it's not that useful. Again, we have defense um, scaling here. So the the main thing, if you're gonna pull on Dilibet, this is why you're pulling on her. Tons of people have a have a cleanse, and tons of people have some generic S one that does whatever it does, right? Like it, it's all fine. So. Then what does designer Lilibet do if not if these aren't her main purposes? And that's again, why did you pull on her? Because you saw this passive and you saw how strong it was in conjunction with this. Um, so let's take a look at what her passive does. Her passive gives her fighting spirit based on every um, debuff inflicted on an ally. Uh, and she gets she starts with 50, and then once she, the whole thing gets filled, she triggers at the end of everyone's turn, at the end of every every unit's turn, whether it's yours or the enemy's, it'll gain fighting spirit depending on how many debuffs they have. So no matter whose turn it is, she'll get Fighting Spirit. And whoever's turn it is, um, when she has 100%, she'll cleanse everything off herself and then 40% uh, boost in CR. So when we're looking at her, I guess the question you need to ask yourself is what does she do? Back Going back to the first you know, the first question I asked is what, what does she do and what's her purpose? Designer Lilibet's main purpose is to be in an environment where you're constantly getting debuffed, right? So if we can make a comparison, and this is my stats if anyone wants to see, it. Um, I actually wasn't close to 1600. I'm, I'm actually on the opposite end of that, so I'm closer to 15. But anyway, the point being, let's look at someone who kind of does similar to what she does. Uh, if we can kind of look over here. When I, in the first video, I made comparisons to Landy uh, because they both have Fighting Spirit and, and that's basically the main thing. Um, but they don't actually do the same thing, but they kind of go about what they do in the same way. Landy does like she counters buffs, but she does not. If if you wanted a unit that counters buffs, you can just bring uh, DJ Basar or you can bring New Angie, right? They cleanse the buffs and then they put up unbuffable. They counter buffs in that way. Landy does not do that. She doesn't have a. Uh, you know, once she S threes, you know, remove all their buffs or whatever. Landy thrives in a situation where the enemy brings buffs. She doesn't stop them from bringing buffs. She counters them by punishing them for bringing a lot of buffs. Right? That's how Landy works, and that's why people like Landy, and that's why you that's why you run her because she counters that setup. If we look at Dilibet, Dilibet operates very in a very similar way you don't want her to come in and stop the enemy from using buffs you want her to come in and punish the enemy for using debuff i mean you don't want to stop them i said buffs earlier but you don't want to stop them from using debuffs right that's not what she's designed to do you want to come in and punish them for using debuffs so you want them to use debuffs and then you punish them for it the same way with landy you want to bring her in punish the enemy for using lots of buffs, right? The more buffs they have, the better Landy is. 
you want designer little bit to work the same way you want her so that the more debuffs they have the more debuffs they're using the stronger little bit is one of the buffs and one of the re the main reasons i was um remaking this video is i was speaking with rundus in the last one or um, in the comment section and one thing that he brought up and, and i'm sure and I, the reason i'm making this video not just talking to him is because i'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who who think the same thing just give her immunity and that's going to make her stronger and i i'm not going to sit here and tell you that immunity is not going to make her is not a buff right if you give her immunity it's definitely like a buff like it's going to make her better but it's not going to make her better at the thing she's trying to do giving her immunity stops them from using debuffs right well to a certain degree so we'll, we'll get to that in a moment um how that works but giving her immunity stops them from giving debuffs, make, making her S2 useless. You're not going to get S2 procs anymore because they all have immunity. You're not getting Fighting Spirit, so her Fighting Spirit mechanic is wasted, right? So that's why it's important to realize why an immunity buff is not useful. So at that baseline, right, before we get into, you know, further on, at that baseline, immunity would not be useful on her because she does not farm, she can't farm her Fighting Spirit um, and at that point, once like if she if you give her immunity and then she boosts forward once, gives everyone immunity, then she becomes useless. She becomes no different than well not useless, but she becomes no different than a DJ Basar. Only worse because at least DJ Basar has healing, right? Um, or an ML Cowric. I don't have him because I didn't pull for him, but or she becomes similar to an ML Cowric where ML Cowric puts immunity and then he does his kit is designed around the fact that he gives immunity. Now he hits people, he does whatever he does, right? It's up to him. But Dilibet becomes basically useless because her whole S2, all of that becomes useless after the first time it procs. And then now everyone has has uh, immunity and then there you go, right? Now once we move into the broader um, analysis of what immunity would do for her, let's look at it this way. Okay, so some people, one of the, thing, one of the points I mentioned earlier was that like, uh, in the first video was that people who bring like there's not a whole lot of point to bringing immunity because of those strips everywhere so let's consider two scenarios right the first case is where the immunity is important like you bring in you bring her in she puts up immunity and it actually works and you know you don't have to worry about getting stripped until maybe next you know after a few rotations well then again like i said she becomes useless and she becomes no better than cowrick in that sense right and she becomes even a worse cowrick because cowrick's designed around that because at least cowrick gives you um attack buff and such right so if the immunity stays up and it's a strong buff and it was worth using her for then she the rest of her becomes useless if we go into another scenario where all they bring a bunch of debuffers and all of them cleanse the immunity off then the immunity was worthless right it was useless so in both scenarios they're not really worth having either the immunity is good and useful in which case you should have just brought a different immunity grantor um, because now Dilibet has made herself useless by granting immunity. Or you bring her into a situation where Dilibet's kit and everything are useful and her S2 is proccing and all that because they're stripping the immunity, in which case the immunity was worthless, right? That's kind of why she didn't come with immunity to begin with is because she's not designed for that. She's designed to exist in an environment where there's constant debuffs going on, right? The same way Landy does not strip all their buffs after she has threes. Um, or the same way that even like if we want to take a look at another example. Blood Moon Haze counters revives not by stopping the revival because there's units that do that. Things like um, Spez, things like um, Green Lilibet. Like there's Extinction, you know, just Extinction in general. Extinction does that. It'll counter revives by just not letting them happen. Blood Moon Haze thrives in a situation where they constantly keep reviving. It's why he's so good against um, Maid Chloe. She, he doesn't stop her from reviving. He punishes her for reviving. Again, we, we want this same mentality going into Designer Lilibet's kit. You don't, want them to, you don't want to stop them from debuffing you, right, by giving immunity. Immunity, basically, that's what it does. It stops them from debuffing you. Now, granted, like I said... If it doesn't, if immunity doesn't stop them from debuffing you, then the immunity is useless, and there's no point in giving it to her anyway, right? So, in her situation, she wants to be. She doesn't want to stop them from debuffing you. She wants the enemy to debuff you, and then thrive in that situation. Feed off of those debuffs the same way Landy does, where Landy doesn't want them to stop buffing themselves. She wants them to stop to to keep buffing themselves, and she gets to feed off of that. 
The problem being that people kind of have a misunderstanding of how Dilibet should work because she's not very good at it. Like, she doesn't do anything Landy levels of powerful for debuffs the way Landy does for buffs. And that's kind of what the whole point of this video is. It's just like, how do we make her better at that, right? So one of the original things that I suggested was giving her a defense buff somewhere on her kit. Um, you could attach it to the S3. So once she has three, she has a two-turn... Uh, defense buff or did I say debuff? I, I meant to say defense buff. Sorry, I'm kind of like tripping over my words here. Like I said, and I don't have a script, so you know. Um, but so one of the things that you know, how do we make her thrive in her? Before we get to the defense buff, I've also, I guess I already kind of got ahead of myself there. Let's take a step back here and slow down. Um, before we get into like how do we buff her, let's take a look at like. What does she need to do to punish them, right? She needs to like take turns, which is what the S, the uh, this wants to do. She kind of needs to take turns, and she, when she hits people, she needs to hit them hard, right? And that's kind of one of the problems. If we can look at my my build here, my build has two thousand plus defense with three hundred crit damage, basically three hundred when you add this in there. So three hundred crit damage, and she still does not hit very hard. Sure, she might hit like an RB hard, but everyone hits RB hard, right? Because RB only has 9,000 HP, like, you know what I mean? Like, she, I don't need, I mean, she doesn't need to be doing like, you know, remnant violet levels of damage, but I mean, she has no damage against anyone that's not squishy. So if she's fighting like another, uh, another, another warrior, she's going to do no damage to them. If she's fighting a tank, she's going to do no, da no damage to them. If she's fighting a soul weaver, she's going to do no damage to them. She does no damage to anyone in the cast that isn't like at base health, right? Or base defense that's kind of one of the problems with her the other problem is that no one is running pure debuffers in this game no one's gonna go into RTA or gonna go into Guild War or like the regular arena comps no one's building those and running all four debuffers right that's not realistic if you're playing RTA which is the main place where I want these debuffs to be effective if you're playing RTA, they bring in debuffers, and then they bring in like an RB or just someone who's going to do damage. And anyone who does damage is just going to kill Designer Lilibet. Like at these stats, like at these stats with a plus 30, 16% um, reduction, she still basically just gets two tapped by an RB, right? So it's important, to even without even Gab, I want to stress that. Like she's been two tapped by RBs that didn't have Gab. So, you know, there's no amount of tankiness right now where she is that it's like, it's a She's not tanky, right? That's basically the bottom line. She just is not tanky enough. So on top of not being tanky and not being not doing enough damage, I really do think that's where the debuff the the defense buff comes in. I do think she needs a defense buff somewhere on her because I've played her in situations where she's had a defense buff and she hits as hard as you kind of like it's not she doesn't hit overly hard. She's not suddenly like chunking a Ruel for half her HP bar or anything like that, right? She's not that strong. But she's certainly doing more damage. She's doing a decent amount of, you know, human, like, average damage that's, like, worth using her for. Um, the problem being is that if you're running her in the situation she wants to be, there's no other unit, right? The, the situation she wants to be is in a situation where your team is getting constantly debuffed. There's no other unit who can keep up with her to give her the defense buff, right? So that's why I think that offloading the defense buff off to her own kit rather than having a separate unit bring it is kind of vital now i think every time this procs maybe you can give her a one turn debuff right i think that would be good or we can kind of take a note from landy right landy doesn't give herself an attack buff even though you know she benefits it from it greatly landy gives herself extra attack on her s2 right every time she takes a every time she she attacks maybe we can instead of giving her a defense buff maybe we can add that to her passive Every time this triggers, she gets 10% defense up to, you know, whatever, a certain amount, right? But that's just a suggestion. So either they make it so that, like, maybe her S1 gives her a defense buff or something, or her S3 gives her a defense buff or something. Or, like I said, maybe it's just a passive defense um, percentage gain over time. I think, you know, any one of those scenarios I think would be good. I just, like, she needs something more than nothing, right? So I think... Defense buff in and of itself would be good on her because it increases her survivability for one, and it also increases uh, her damage output. And you know, with a defense buff, she does decentable, respectable damage. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that I mentioned this in the other video that Landy gets ten fighting spirit per uh, enemy buff, right? 
10 fighting spirit. Now this is the thing with this is it's kind of balanced around the fact that like she only gets the fighting spirit on her turn, right? The reason it's kind of hard to um, balance this is because she gets this fighting spirit at the end of anyone's turn. Um, but even that being said, I really do think they should boost this up to um, 10 fighting spirit per debuff. And I think she'll be solid at that point. Um, so those are the two buffs I want to see. Extra defense on her somewhere in the form of either a buff or just a passive defense gain the same way um, Landy gains attack. Or, yeah, those the, those are a defense buff. Or uh, giving her more fighting spirit off her S2, right? Those are the two main buffs I want to see. Uh, and I think at that point she'll be strong at what she does. Because she won't become so generally strong that you'll bring her against people who don't have debuffs. Because, you know, that's not a good idea no matter what. Uh, but at least now she'll be strong against people. Like, she'll be punishing people who... Uh, bring in like one or two debuffers, right? Because as she is now, unless they're bringing three debuffers or four of them, she's not really going to do very much because, again, they're bringing in two debuffers, a tank or a soul weaver somewhere, and a um, and like a damage dealer. And she's not going to be hitting hard enough to kill that soul weaver, and she's not going to be tanky enough to deal with the, whatever damage dealer they chose, right? Um, so that's kind of what I, you know, the main point I wanted to make there was. She needs more damage uh, and more survivability, and she needs to just irritate them and punish them more for bringing debuffs, right? The more debuffs they have, the more this will trigger, and the more she'll take her own turns. Um, again, ignore the like the, the the counter set that I have on her. It's not temporary. I'm going to keep her on counter set probably forever. But I, the argument, because you know you can either bring her on counter set or you can bring her on uh, speed set. Um, personally, I think they're both kind of even in terms of like. Like, so you're, you're taking speed buff, so you, you can take more turns, right? Um, but I think in the long run, they kind of average out to be the same, right? Because, like, you're, you're, you're naturally faster. Um, but here, every time she gets hit, she uses one of these and gets 25% uh, fighting spirit, which helps trigger this. Uh, and then she gets 40% CR boost, right? So I think they kind of average out over time in terms of, like, how, uh, how, they, how they move in terms of the CR bar. Um, but yeah, so, like I said... Those are the two main buffs I was suggesting. One more experimental and one that I'm more cautious with is probably giving her a buff uh, to her S3 where we make it so that the every time the S2 triggers, we reduce the cooldown of the S3 by one, right? And then, you know, or maybe like just keep it where it is now or increase this to five, right? Right now it's, well, right now it's five minus one, so it's four. Increase this to six maybe and then minus one is five. Um, and then have it do that, right? So this way, she's constantly, again, you want to punish them for bringing debuffs into you. Cleansing your whole team is a good way to punish them, um, but giving immunity does not punish them. It only stops them, right? So that's kind of why I, I value. I don't necessarily agree with her having immunity, um, and there's already enough units that, that do that on their own anyway. Um, but yeah, so those are, the, those are the main tenets that I want to bring up. Um, so I guess in, in summation, um, her niche is thriving in a situation where you're constantly getting debuffed. She's not very good at that niche now. Uh, immunity does not punish people the way she wants to punish people. Uh, it only stops them. And lastly, the buffs being uh, defense buff somewhere or some sort of defense stacking um, situation. Uh, more, more fighting spirit doesn't have to be ten. Maybe they can just boost it up to seven or something. I don't know. Just, just more than it is now because right now it doesn't trigger enough. And lastly, the tentative buff of giving her S three some cooldown or something on it, right? Um, so yeah, that that's that's the main points I wanted to make. Um, hopefully they're more clear, they're more concise, um, and just generally useful. Um, the video is about half of the length of the first time I did this, so uh, that should be good. Uh, so I guess if you know. This will probably be the last time I do this because I, uh, I think I've, I've gotten all the points out I wanted to make and anything else will be more for discussion. So again, if you have anything you want to say um, in the comments will be fine and I'll probably discuss them more there. Um, the only reason I did this video was as I was discussing with Rundus in the comments before, I was realizing that I, I had failed in the video I had made. So um, I may have, you know, maybe this one isn't the best video, but I do really think this is a lot better than the original uh, and I'll just leave it at this. So I'm not just like constantly remaking the same video over and over again. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys were able to take something away from this. Um, 
do I have any pull with me, uh, with uh, Smilegate or anyone? No, obviously we're probably not going to see these buffs, but it's more of a um, what they could do, and also one of the uh, like whenever her whenever she does get buffs, I can point to this video and say I, I called it first. So <laughs> that's kind of it's a bit of a petty reason, but obviously that's kind of one of the reasons I have it. Like I, I wanted to make this video, uh, but other than that, I mean, hopefully, like I said, hopefully it's just more clear and it's like it explains what Dilibet's job does better. And you know we can we can think about buffs going forward more you know concisely, uh, and I'll have to make sure I do a similar like I'll do I have to make sure I break down the units this way that I did now going forward into other units where I think they should be buffed as well. Um, but yeah, so hopefully uh, you guys enjoy this video and um, that's two in one day. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the, in the next one.